After a wild summer of racing, we're fast approaching the end of the 2023 UCI Mountain Bike World Series. The next two stops in Snowshoe in the USA and Monse and in Canada will see the World Cup overall winners decided in all three cross-country disciplines and in downhill. With 14 World Cup titles up for grabs, we've dived into the data to see who can come out on top once the dust or mud has settled. In the elite downhill fields, we've got two very different scenarios playing out. While we're yet to have a repeat winner in the elite men's field, in the elite women's, it's a different story. Valley Hull has had a storming year and comes into the final two races just over 400 points ahead. There are 650 points still up for grabs, 400 from Snowshoe, but only 250 points at Mont saint Anne due to a rule that sees points only be awarded in the finals at the last round of the series. The only other riders left with a mathematical chance of taking the overall are Nina Hoffman and Marine Cabaru. Marine sits in third place but has quite a mountain to climb and will require a nightmare couple of weekends for both Valley and Nina. Nina is closer to Valley but would also need Valley to finish well down the order in both races to take the lead. Although Valley finished a disappointing 10th at the last round in Leger, following a first corner crash, she's been extremely consistent for the rest of the year with three wins, one second place, and a fourth. It is possible for Tani Seagrave to catch Marine Cabaret for the third overall, as she is 639 points behind Marine with 650 available. Camille Belanche is not racing for the rest of the season, sadly, due to that big crash in Andorra. Monica Hrashnik can finish second overall as she is 397 points behind Nina Hoffman in the overall. It's likely that the podium will be between Hull, Hoffman, Cabaru and Hrashnik. So who are we predicting, people? I'm guessing it's got to be Valley's title to lose now. Moving on to the elite men, there's just 237 points covering the top six. Mathematically, any of the riders down to 13th could take the overall, but right now, Lower Bruni leads the standings with a small buffer to Jackson Golston in second and Loris Vergier in third. In fourth, we have Finn Isles, fifth is Benoit Collange, sixth, Andreas Kolb. Bruni will need to use all his experience to manage the pressure from the many riders snapping at his heels and navigate what are some notoriously demanding tracks. With five World Championships and two previous World Cup overall titles to his name, as well as a World Cup win already this season, he's got to be the favourite to get the job done. But anything could happen over the next couple of weekends. Into the junior women, there's almost nothing separating Valentina Roa Sanchez and Lisa Bulladu. Valentina is in great form with a win last time out and her lowest finishing position at fourth so far this season. Anything can happen though, and we're sure she's going to be pushed to the end. In the junior men, Ryan Pinkton has had a commanding lead after taking maximum points from the past three World Cup weekends in a row. He sits 88 points ahead of Bodie Kuhn, with 120 points available from the last two rounds. While nothing is certain is racing, that's a great position for Ryan to be in. Over to cross country, and let's start with the women's XCC overall. The women's elite short track is very close between Puck Pizze and Alessandra Keller, who are on 1,080 and 1,050 points respectively. Pauline for Van Perot is on 850, Evie Richards on 836, and Laura Steger on 834. Can all catch the first two with 500 points available left in the series. This means the podium places are up for grabs with the race for the title looking close, with Keller and Pizze having been quite dominant in the races so far. In the men's overall for the XCC, there's a two-horse race between Lucas Schwartzbauer and Jordan Saru on 1270 and 1040 points. Luca is over 500 points clear of Joshua Dubot in third on 738 points. So two rounds worth of 500 left in the season can't be caught. Dubot could catch Saru for second, being 302 points behind at the moment. The third spot on the podium could go to any of the top eight. Now to the men's overall XC Olympic. Everyone down to Anton Cooper in 16th overall could technically win the overall series with 330 points per round available, 250 from the XCO and 80 XCO points from the XCC. Nino Schurter is the only repeat winner of 23, but did have a disappointing round three in Leo Gang, uh, possibly a hangover from his previous record-breaking weekend in Lenzerheide. 
It's still very even the whole way down with no massive points gaps or jumps. The 98 point gap between Nino and Matthias Fluckinger in second is only exceeded by that of Alan Havley in eighth on 844 and Vlad Dasklu in ninth on 745. Those are the largest gaps in the top 45. Victor Koretsky has been riding strong with a win in the short track and Olympic XE at Leger and even the Paris Olympics test event, but is lying down in 13th currently, so we need a lot of things to go his way in the last two rounds. The fact that each position is still quite open and you could score XO points in XCC means fighting for every position counts. If you're outside the top 16 in XCC, you still score points down to 40th. So it's worth racing, even if it won't directly correlate to a fourth or fifth row start in the XCO. The takeaway from all this is that everything could change. In the women's XCO overall, Puck Peters A is 323 points clear of Mona Mittenwaller in second, so nearly a whole perfect race in hand. And that's a big gap compared to the rest further down the field. Puck has been fairly dominant with three XCO wins in 2023. The other winners have been an on-form and convincingly strong Mona Mittenwaller, who took the most recent two races, and Luana Lecomte, who won in Leo Gang in early June and was fourth and seventh in the last two races, so another win isn't out of the question for her. Plus, she won the Olympic test event this weekend ahead of Stiga and Ferran Prevot. Peter Zay was in ninth at that event. Pauline Ferran Prevot hasn't won an XCO World Cup this year, but with two third places in as many rounds and lying third in the series, the current XCC and XCO World Champion, who doubled down on her four world titles last year, will surely want to win a World Cup by the end of this year and challenge for that overall title. Puck Peterse can be caught by Laura Steger in seventh, who's on 901 points and everyone above her. At the other end of the mountain bike World Cup series spectrum, let's look at the cross-country marathon standings. The marathon season wraps up at Snowshoe. Both the elite men and elite women's overall titles are still in play. In the elite men, Fabian Rabensteiner is leading the pack, but anyone in the top 10 could theoretically win the overall at the last round. After a first place in Novo Mesto back in May, Rabensteiner's form has dipped slightly with a third and ninth place finishes, while second place Hector Leonardo Pérez Leon is coming on strong with a win last time out. This one's going down to the wire. For the elite women, it's a different story as we have a two-horse race for the overall title. After a consistent season featuring a win and two second places, Leila Nemchevic is 240 points ahead of second place rider Vera Loser. With just 250 points left on the table, Leila has got to be the favourite to seal the title this weekend. So all coming to a head in the next couple of weeks for the World Cup races. Don't forget you can watch all the racing live and on demand over on GCN Plus with a subscription. And on GMBN Racing YouTube, we've got the uh, semis and junior downhill racing live, of course, totally free, plus the under 23 cross country. So get involved and I can't wait to see what happens these last two races.